Hello, this is Katie again, and I have another Halloween card for you. I think this is either number five or six. I should have checked first before I started filming. Anyway, so um, I want to do a um, Halloween shaker card with some new sequins that I have and an old die that I have. And um, it's inspired by a card from Crazy Paper Chick. I will link that video down below. Um, so I have this die, I believe it's from My Favorite Things, I'm like 99% sure. It's a little older, um, it is very stuck to the magnet sheet that it is on. Um, it is smaller, it's not card sized, it's four by five and a quarter, so I've cut my card base to four by five and a quarter. Um, and then I have a piece of acetate for the back of the shaker uh, to the same size as that. And then I'm going to be um, doing orange for the front. It's got little webs on it. I don't know if that is visible to you. And then the shiny bats. And these are both from Spooky Boo by American Crafts. So I pulled those out of that paper pad. So... Um, I'm trying to keep the acetate clean, which is very difficult to do. Anyway, um, so I'm going to cut this out of the orange cardstock. I'm going to pre-trim so I can save that strip of it for something else. I'll just leave those out and then grab my big shot because this will not fit through my sidekick and I hope I don't shake you too much while I'm doing this. The last time I used this was on one of my favorite cards I ever made um, and it was glitter paper I believe actually no it wasn't. Um, I remember it being a little difficult but um, I just run this through twice to be safe. Um, that should be pretty easy. They're mostly falling apart. And then I kind of just use the die itself to scrape off the um, paper pieces left behind. So I can set that down and put this guy away. I don't think I need the big shot for the rest of the card. Okay. So these, I will just get all of these out. I'm hoping this goes well. The shaker part is going to be a little difficult. Um, I'm wondering if there's a better way to do this. Because what I was going to do was... Um, use my foam tape like maybe double up double up on it like um fold it over on itself and then cut that into strips but this is a really really thin side here so i think what i'm going to do instead is use some fun foam and since the background is going to be black if this actually works and cuts this out of fun foam i'll need my big shot again then I can cut it out of here and then just trim out the spider webs and use the outside rim. Um, so we'll see if this works. I'll need the big shot again. I'm hoping that this works because that would be a lot easier. The die seemed pretty good with paper. We'll see if it functions with the fun foam. Going slow, I don't want to shake you. Popped out, doesn't want to come back. Mm, come on. There we go. Okay, we'll see how that worked. I think it, oop, it shifted. Definitely. So maybe just one go through. Um, hmm. Okay. I have more fun foam. 
so I will try it. <clears throat> I don't think it liked it when I pushed it back through. So we will just do one go through and hope that that's good enough. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's work with that and see. I will set the big shot to the side. Ooh, this worked a lot better than I thought it was going to. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'll probably pause for this portion, um, is push all of these out and then um, trim just to the edge. That way I can um, put the acetate on the back here and then I can glue this down as the border so that we have some room for sequins. I'm hoping this will be tall enough. Uh, maybe I can glue, um, do another one and glue two on there. So uh, I will go ahead and pause while I create this border. Okay, so that worked actually. I was very impressed. Uh, so I cut a second one. So I have the two foams and I just trimmed uh, where it was connected with the web. So I have two borders here. I'm going to um, glue down the acetate first to here. Um, so I'll set this aside for just a second so it doesn't get dirty. I finally unclogged my little thing. In a video where I told you guys this never clogs, it clogged the next time I used it. So of course it did. Um, I had to turn on a fan behind me so hopefully that's not too loud. Um, okay, so I'm going to put... This is trying to be clogged. There we go. Um, just put some glue in kind of the bigger areas. Some dots in the middle to connect it, um, but mo mostly a border around the edge. Oops, I just touched some glue. As long as you rub it fast enough, it'll come off. So we'll do this last edge here, and then just some dots to connect it to. Okay, works for me. So, one last blow on the acetate. I'm not sure why it got so dirty. I'm wondering if I can just run like an alcohol swab over it. It just got um, like dust on it, but now it doesn't want to come off just by blowing on it. So. dry that quickly okay and the webs will be covering up a lot of this so this one I'm not too worried about but I need to get it down before this glue dries so try and center this best I can on the web oops That should be good. I think the glue may have dried a little bit while I was cleaning that, so hopefully that sticks pretty well. Okay, so I've got the acetate on that backing, and then um, I just need to put glue down around the four edges for the frame. And then since the backing, like I said, is going to be the black bats uh, paper, the black uh, fun foam will work pretty well. I'm just going to drop this down and then shape it after. 
So just try and find the edges, find the glue that I put down. And then I think I will use um, her technique from the video. She uses a couple stamp blocks to hold some pressure on it while it dries. So I'll give this one a little bit to dry before I do the second frame. Oops. I'm going to apply pressure again all along the edge. This is still easier to me than um, the foam tape option. Okay, so I'm going to find a block. This one might cover... And do this and that. Okay, so I'm going to let these sit for a minute and I will pause and then I will put the uh, second one on and let that dry and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I have added the two borders so it's a little taller um, and then uh, used a, a brush. I really just use it for brushing away like embossing powder and stuff like that. So I got some embossing, um, the embossing buddy, like the static bag. I just use some of that and brush the insides for any of the glue that hasn't dried. Otherwise it's gonna take quite a while. Um, so I'm gonna cut this down to four by five and a quarter so I can place it on the back of the card. And the five and a quarter is like missing from this uh, cutting thing, trimmer, paper trimmer, that's what it's called. But this should be okay, so I'm just going to set that over it just to see. So that should be fine. So that'll be the background that looks really cool. You can kind of see the bats inside. So I will use the glue again for that. We will use that strip and save that one. Okay, so I have uh, several I want to show you, several sequin mixes I got from Cat Scrappiness. Um, I'm going to be using the last two that I'll show you, but I wanted to show you um, the ones I got. I never showed you guys. I got a lot of things I did not show in a haul because it was really too much. Um, so I got Bootacular, which has some ghosts and green and purple and black. I got one uh, Pumpkinlicious that's got purple, black, orange, and then pumpkin faces. And then Trick or Treat, which is really pretty. It's got like lavender, light orange, and black. And those are the cupped sequins. And then this one folded in on itself. Ghostly Greetings with some like little seed sequins in orange. Ghosts in black and purple. And then Fright Night with flat neon. And then some bats and ghosts. This was um, just a thank you that she added, which is shimmering. And they're actually like they feel like rough glitter. It's kind of cool. And then I got Halloween Icons, which are pumpkins bats i think there's cats in there and skulls and crossbones and things and then a boo hoo with cupped sequins lavender light green light orange ghosts and black there was one i ordered that she was out of and now i can't remember even what it is because i ordered so many but um i think the two i'm gonna mix in here are the hocus pocus and glittery goblins they are flat this one has more than circles. It's got the little sticks in it. So I think I'll put a little bit of each in here. Um, does this not just scream Hocus Pocus? I thought that was perfect. I have a Hocus Pocus, some sort of anniversary t-shirt. I got at Disney just because I really thought it was cute um, in 2015. 
um, at the shop right outside Magic Kingdom. And um, it's like all of these colors to a T. So pretty genius. Now this needs quite a few sequins to kind of shake around the whole card. So I'm just using some from each so I don't go through a whole bag. That would be sad because I want to make more sequin or shaker cards with them. I'll add a few more from this one. <clears throat> okay, so make those flat. Then I will put glue along the foam edge again. Be a little thinner this time so I don't squeeze out so much. This one has kind of a bend in it. Hopefully that won't be a problem. Oops. Okay. So then I'm trying to remember where I would want uh, the right side up. I think that can be the top. So I will stick this down. I'll probably stand up so I can get a better view. Make sure it's lined up. And then just press down gently on the edges. And I'm hoping I can, I'll just put the adhesive on the card side here. And uh, <clears throat> do the same thing with the weighted for a little bit. Press down a little bit on those. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for just a little bit and then I'll be right back. Okay. So I gave that a little bit of time. I'm going to flip it over. Ooh, I like how that turned out. So they're moving pretty well. They're probably catching on. A couple of them are catching on the glue, which is fine. So I'm going to, trying to see if I can trim, I don't know if I can trim any of the fun foam off. I think we're just gonna have to let it go. Because if I trim any of that, then I break the seal, probably. So, it's all a little crooked, but that's fine. So, I want to put it on a card, and then we're going to add a sentiment. So, I'm going to just cover the back of this so that it's on there really well. And while I was letting the last section dry a little bit, I opened up a couple um, Halloween cards from the exchange um, that I'm doing. And they are both amazing. You guys have no idea how happy. I love Halloween Happy Nail. And I'm so excited. I'll probably share the two on my stories, although I will be doing a video of all the cards that I get um, to share your guys' Instagrams so people can find you because you're awesome. So I think what I'll do, this is what she does in her video too. I should probably just do this more often is just line it up with the table and then press down. So I'm going to open and then just press here. It might be a little hard for it to grab onto the back of that, but it's going to be more, more of a functional card than the edges looking pretty. All right, so that part is pretty cute, I think. And then we're going to take a black strip, take my embossing buddy bag. And so this is, um, I probably won't end up doing like a beginner's tips video unless you guys really, really want one and you're just starting out. Um, let me know and I'll think about it, but I'm sure there's plenty out there. I just feel like the things I do are kind of maybe different. Um, I see a lot of people use embossing powder and then like don't even wipe it off, which is just bothers me. I don't know why 
because it works just as well. It's just a static reliever, so you can put it down and brush it off. You shouldn't have to stamp on powder. It just seems odd to me, but that's okay. So I'm going to use clear, and I'm going to be using the I'm That's About You from the My Favorite Things set that I just got, Which Way is the Candy. I love this so much. So it's that sentiment right there. And then uh, emboss it in white. So I'll get that inked up. I'm just going to do the edge and we're going to actually trim a banner off of it. Turn off my fan, sorry. Okay. So then I've got this here and my white embossing powder. And I stamped it somewhere. Oh, it flipped over. That's why. Okay, so. Should be plenty. I think I blew too much of it off, sorry. Works for me. Put this back. Okay. And then I'll heat up my gun for a second and then I will melt this. So then I have my one inch square punch from Stampin' Up! that I use for banners all the time. I'm going to try and scrape off this one. White dot. So you just hold it backwards, basically. Find the end of your sentiment and then just kind of pull it out how long you think you want it. Make sure it's centered. Cut out a little house shape. And then you have a banner. And it's a lot easier than cutting it yourself. So then I want to take, um, I think we will stick this right to it rather than lifting it up because it's already pretty tall. So just make sure I have enough adhesive on the back so that it'll stick to the webs. There's not a lot holding up the card in the middle. So uh, there's that. And then I actually have these bat dies. I think I have other bat dies, but I saw these when I was looking for my uh, web one. And there are three little bats. So I'm going to cut out um, three of these with black. Um, and I think I can honestly just do it with my sidekick. So I will do that with you here. Come on. This doesn't, um, this will suction to a normal table because I took it babysitting once, but it doesn't suction to this like craft mat. Um, it doesn't seem to last long suctioned there. So we will get some black cardstock. And just send these guys through. They're still connected. I must have just cut out bats at a time, a few bats at a time that I needed. And then bring it back through. Okay, and then what I will do, which I've probably done in the past, is um, bend their little wings and then put a little piece of foam tape on them. So bend them like they're coming off. Oh, no, you know what? It was a glue dot. I'll get my glue dots out because I have little ones for this guy too. So those are under me somewhere.
I'm going to pause while I find my glue dots. Okay, I've got medium glue dots, which is more the size of this guy. So I'm just going to set him down on a dot, pick it up off the paper, and we will just plop him down, put these ones back, and we'll take a small glue dot for this guy. Put him over here. Probably just um, sticking them down to a, a web so I'm sure that they're secure. And then we'll take this last little guy and put him right over here. Alright. So that will finish off the card. Hopefully I can take an okay picture of this. I think it's really cute. It just has, I mean, obviously has some edges showing and this probably wasn't the um, thickest border for a shaker card, but I think I still like it. So I'll probably send someone this in the mail. I still think it's very cute. It's just more functional than pretty, but um, yeah. So that is it, and uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully I will have another one soon. Thanks, bye.